Hi, so thanks for joining me for part two of our triad expedition. Uh, last time we looked at triads on the top three strings and generated some nice pedal steely kind of tricks and, and licks from those. This time we're venturing over to the three bass strings, our lowest string set. And we're going to generate some really nice swing guitar voicings out of these, some really crucial three note voicings if you're interested in any kind of swing music from you know jazz and western swing to blues, but also modern alternative guys like Johnny Greenwood will use these kinds of voicings a lot. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take our triads, C major triads, along the three bass strings. Okay, so we've got this one down here, 5, 1, 3. That's what we call a second inversion. So this one here is root third fifth, that's what we call a root position. And then we have the first inversion, third fifth root. For me I just like to think about what's in the bass. So I think of this as C with the fifth in the bass. This is just C. And then this is C with E in the bass, so that's C with the third in the bass. These are so worth exploring, just as they are. They're amazing sounding things, they have a lot of depth to them. To me they sound almost Hammond organ-like. For us though we're going to push them further. We're going to spread these triads. Uh, a spread triad is simply where you take the middle note one octave higher. So in the case of this one we're going to move this C up to the fifth fret of the G string but retain the other two notes. So it's crucial to kill or block out the A string. So now we have the fifth, the third, and the root. Again, this is a brilliant thing to explore. Okay, we do the same with the next one. Take that middle note one octave higher. So we're looking for E on the G string. This one can feel a bit stretchy, so you've got the, the root, skip the A string again, then you've got your fifth, and then your third. Okay, now the last one. Take that middle note, the G, one octave higher. Now you've got your third, your root, and your fifth. Okay, now the next step really is to, to move these somewhere else. So let's say we're looking for an F chord. We're going to take all the same approaches. So the first one, if we're starting nearest to the nut, the first F triad on the lowest three strings is this one, the first inversion. Third, fifth, root. The next one is this, second inversion. So that's the fifth, the root, the third. Then the last one is the root position one, the root, third, fifth. Okay, so just to clarify, F with the third in the bass, F with the fifth in the bass, and then F with the root in the bass. Okay, so let's give that the spread triad treatment. Take that C, one octave higher. There's F, first inversion, spread triad. Okay, now this one. Take that middle note, the F, one octave higher. There's our second inversion, spread triad. And then the final one, Take that middle note, the A this time, one octave higher. There's the root position, spread triad. Of course, these three shapes are the same ones we had for C. They've just moved across the fretboard. Okay, so let's say you want to go from C to F, but you want to try and stay in a position. Uh, let's say we start down here with this C with the fifth in the bass. The nearest F is going to be the one with the third in the bass. Notice how we can keep the top note the same. Pretty cool. Okay, the next one, if we're here and we're playing this C, the nearest F now is this one. Again, we're retaining a note, the bass note this time isn't changing. So you've got your C root position spread triad, moving to the F spread triad with the fifth in the bass. Okay, then the final one, what if you're up here with this C? This is the one with the third in the bass. 
but this is going to move up to the F with the root as the lowest pitch. So now we've got three ways to navigate C to F. Okay, so now let's add the fifth, G. So let's say we're going to go from C to F to G, then back to C. So a good old one, four, five, one. You've got this C, this F. Now where's the G? The nearest G would be this one, right? The kind of stretchy one. We can incorporate the open strings. Okay, then back to C. In this position here, C. F, G, C. So just to clarify, C with the root in the bass, F with the fifth in the bass, G with the third in the bass, back to the C with the root in the bass. Okay, then up here, C with the third in the bass, F with the root in the bass, G with the fifth in the bass, back to C with the third in the bass. Okay, so I think the next step now really is to look at adding some more colour to some of these chords, some extensions. Um, to keep things as three note voicings, of course, that means we're going to lose something. Let's start here, the C with the fifth in the bass. The top string of this shape, if we drop it a semitone we get our major seventh. So this is a C major seven with the fifth in the bass and no root, so we've lost our root note and that's fine, that's cool. It's kind of implied anyway. So this would be the fifth, the third, and the seven. Drop that note a semitone further. You've got your C7, that's your flat seven. Drop it a semitone further, you get your sixth. I'm barring that with the first finger. You could also play it separately like this. Okay, now the next one. C major spread triad root position. One, five, three. Okay, for this one, it's the middle string we can explore a little bit. We can move this up as opposed to moving it down. Move that fifth up a semitone and you get the augmented triad, the sharpened fifth. Move it up a semitone further, you've got your sixth. At this point, you'd typically switch fingers a little bit to make it a bit more comfortable. There's your C6. Classic swing voicing. You can't play swing music without that shape. Move it up a semitone further, you've got your flat seven. There's your C7. Move it up a semitone further than that and you've got your major seventh. All these pretty voicings. Okay, the next one, third in the bass. For this one, it's the middle note. Again, we can move, but we can drop it. So this would be a C major 7, right? Because we've taken the root, a semitone down. Drop it a semitone further. C dominant 7, that's your flat 7 in the middle. If you can, you can drop it a semitone further. C6. Some of these are not so useful, but it's all, all worth knowing. And it's all important to understand. Because if you understand these concepts, everything about navigating the fretboard gets so much easier. Cool, so now we have a bunch of different voicings built off the foundation of a major triad each time. Uh, what if we want minor voicings? All we have to do is take all of these things we've just done but incorporate the flattened third. So let's say we're down here. Here's your C major. Figure out where the third is. Middle note. Drop it a semitone. You get this great C minor triad voicing. Again, some of these might feel a bit alien, a bit stretchy at first, but you just got to persevere with it. It's all about thumb position, this stuff. Drop the thumb low. It's amazing how many people have their thumb up here and they complain they can't reach. It's like, yeah, of course you can't reach. Your thumb is not in the right place. Okay, so here's the fifth, the minor third, and the root. Let's drop the top note of semitone. That's the major seventh. So we have a C minor major seven here. Drop it again, you've got your flat seven. That's a C minor seven. Drop it a semitone further. C minor 6, really good voicing again. These things are, are your bread and butter voicings if you're playing swing music of any sort. Okay, let's do the same up here. C major, root position, spread triad. 
The third is the top note. Drop it a semitone, you've got your minor third. So this would be your C minor. Okay, now again we're climbing on the D string in this one. So there's your C minor. Here's C minor with a sharpened fifth. Here's C minor six, which again, typically at this point, you'd switch your fingers around. And then a semitone higher, C minor seven. Semitone higher, C minor major seven. There's a lot of Barney Kessel in there. And also James Bond, of course. Okay, the final one. Third, root, fifth. Take that bottom note down a semitone. You got yourself a C minor triad. Flat three, one, five. Now again, you can explore that D string. C minor major seven. C minor seven. C minor six. Some of these voicings aren't quite as useful as the previous ones, uh, but it's important to know them all um, and understand the idea behind them all. We'll cherry pick the ones we need the most. Okay, so let's go back to our 1 4 5 progression in the key of C. Here's C. Here's F. Now for the G, we can make it G7 because it's the 5 chord. So let's go for this. One of the voicings we just discovered up here for C, we've moved it to G. And then back to C. So now you've got this really nice way of navigating a 1 4 5. Okay, so for the next one. C, F. Now we have a choice. We can go back to the G we originally used. Just a G triad, no flat seven in there. Sounds great like that. Or we can go G7. I actually prefer going without the seven on that just because it seems to flow a little nicer. The next one, C major, F. This is where that G7 can come in really handy. Okay. Okay, so let's look at some other ways we can travel between changes. Uh, what if we want to just cycle back and forth between a one and a four? Um, seems simple, right? You can just go C, F. But we can also do this. C, C7, F. That C7 is functioning as the 5 of F, it's leading us to it. So you've got 1, 5 of 4, 4. Now how do we get back to 1? Typically you're going to go 4 minor. So we take that F and we make it minor by flattening the 3rd. And then we go back to 1. And now you've got that classic kind of blues turnaround. That's the implied harmony whenever you're hearing this. You know, no matter how simple those turnarounds seem, there's quite a lot of stuff going on, really. Four minor, one. Super nice stuff, and it's really good to explore how to play over those kinds of changes as well, so you can have really good hard-hitting melodic turnarounds. Okay, so let's move this around through the other shapes. C, C7, F. F minor, C. Okay, what about this one up here? You go C, C7, F, F minor, C. Then maybe a G7 as the five to take you back around. Okay, so this stuff is so deep you could go for weeks and weeks exploring this on a daily basis and still discover new things, really. When you're on a four chord and you turn it minor, you can also bring in the sixth interval into that chord to make it a minor sixth, like an F minor six, for example. That sounds really good. You know, you've got the C, C7, F, F minor six, back to C. You can always tie together some of these notes through chromaticism. Really useful.
Okay, so let me just show you a couple more things. Um, let's try and add some movement to a static chord. You know, this sort of thing is really common in all kinds of jazz and country and swing music. Sometimes you're hearing a new chord on every beat of the bar. Um, you have to be able to generate movement off a static chord to be able to do that kind of thing. Okay, so let's say we're starting here. G6, one, six, three. Uh, and let's say we want to end up here. G major triad, three, one, five. Okay, we can walk via a couple of passing chords. This here technically would be a, a D7 with the fifth in the bass. Five, three, flat seven. We then move that same shape of semitone higher. Functionally, you want to think of this as, as a B flat or a G diminished. And then we're ending up here back on the one, back on our triad. Okay, so what if you're playing a blues or you're playing on a dominant chord? Let's take the G7, 1 flat 7 3. We can almost recycle the same run. That second chord though is the difference. Instead of this, D7, we play D minor 7. And the diminished is unchanged, and the final destination is also unchanged. So now you've got this. And imagine you go into your 4, look where you are, a C7 reuse the same run. So you might end up with something like this for your first two bars of a 12 bar in G. Pretty nice, you know, really that's just two chords, G7 and C7, but we're putting in all that movement. Okay, so let's take a 2-5 or a 2-5-1. Let's stay in the key of G. The 2 would be A minor. Let's turn that into a spread triad. 1, 5, flat 3. The 5, the D7, just walk that middle note up to the F sharp and you've got your 5 chord. You've got your D7 with the 5th in the bass. Now we want to resolve to G. Let's go G6. Again, typical swing kind of option. So we might end up with something like this. Okay, so as a final sort of exercise, let's try and apply a bunch of these shapes uh, to a jazz standard. Let's say we're doing the A section of Lady Be Good, typically played in G. So G6, C7, G6, G major triad, B flat diminished, A minor 7, the little walk up we spoke about, to D7, and then a turnaround, G6, G sharp diminished, A minor 7, D7. You can also put in an extra little bit of a run up, I think I did it on the second time. that run we spoke about earlier on. Uh, G6, D7, B flat diminished, G. And then we come back down to the two. You could even chuck in a sneaky little A flat seven there on the way back to the, the G6. That sort of tritone substitution is something we'll, we'll speak about maybe next time. Okay, so I think that's where we'll leave it for now. Um, although we are still just scratching the surface on these things, we have covered a lot of ground. Uh, please take the time to get this stuff confidently under the fingers and get it understood. Um, maybe next time we'll do a lesson on how to apply these things to a totally different style, like some Americana pop or something. Um, 
just to show how multi-layered they are. If you have any questions at all, please do put them in the comments below and I will answer them. Um, also, please like, share and subscribe. It makes all the difference. Uh, I plan to do these videos regularly, like make it a regular occurrence to do some teaching videos as well as performance. Okay, so thanks for checking this out. Uh, have a great Christmas and I'll see you next time.